Gemini. Welcome to Pandora Astrology's monthly horoscope for July of 2022. We are the astrologers of Pandora Astrology. I'm Jamie Kill Miller. I'm in Berkeley, California. And I'm Julia Mijas in San Francisco. Well, Geminis of the world, if you missed your annual birthday reading this year, don't despair. There's still time to get it, and I strongly recommend that you do. You're well into your year already, so you're probably feeling this year's influences, and it might be great to get a reading in which those feelings could be validated, and then you can get more intentional about your year. You'll find a link for your birthday solar return reading in the YouTube description below. Well, Gemini, there are a couple of asteroid goddesses that I want to report to you about right now. Most particularly, uh, let's start with Ceres, which begins the month here in your second house in Cancer, which is great because she loves to be in the second house. This is her home turf. And uh, she's been traveling along through this house for uh, a month or two already. And, um, and bringing you a great deal of solidity and, and like sensible ways of handling your money and running your budget and, um, and just encouraging you to um, get a more intuitive feeling of your own self-worth. However, this month she is going to move on and she's going to connect with the sun. Here's the sun crawling towards Ceres. They're going to form that connection just before the sun. See, right there it is right around July 20th, 21st. And, uh, and then right after that, the sun pops over into Leo and then Ceres pops over into Leo. So what does it all mean? When the sun and Ceres get together, this is the beginning and end of Ceres annual cycle. And so it has that feeling of fresh starts. Ceres is moving at speed during this time period. And um, the sun brings the spotlight of attention. So this can really bring some high quality attention to things like your sense of self-worth, your values, and how you handle your money. It can also bring great attention to food and eating and your sense of how thoroughly you occupy your own skin and your feeling of belonging in the world. So this is, um, this is a wonderful, um, a wonderful thing that happens every year. And, um, and there can be some wonderful new beginnings that you create, especially finance, uh, financially for yourself. Now, as Ceres moves on into Leo, I am, uh, I'm giving out cautions on account of Ceres in Leo can become a little bit more spendy. I think Ceres in Leo is fond of luxury items and sometimes can be um, uh, fooled by the glamor of a price tag. In other words, uh, thinking perhaps that just because something is listed as more expensive means that it's also worth more, which sometimes is true and sometimes not so much. And uh, with Ceres appearing here in the very distractible mercurial arena of the third house, um, I would say, you know, don't let yourself be fooled uh, and don't let yourself get distracted uh, from thinking rationally about money. Uh, now, the other planet I want to tell you about is Juno, which is traveling along through Pisces right now and about to enter into her annual relationship retrospection period, which happens right here, July 24th and 25th. Juno turns retrograde and um, Juno does this in a different sign every year, brings us into this phase and it lasts a couple of months. It'll be going on from July 23rd no wait, July 24th through October 23rd. So several months. And, um, and this is going to take us into um, an inward journey, a backwards journey around our committed relationships, the relationships that are really locked in, like a marriage or someone that you are living together with, or even a business partnership. And, um, and so we're going to be questioning these and most particularly because Juno is in Pisces, we're going to be asking ourselves, how aligned do I feel with this partner on a spiritual level? Do I feel like they really are a soulmate uh, that I'm married to or, you know, somebody that I feel a sense of spiritual alignment with in my, uh, in my work? And, um, and so those will be some pretty deep questions and, um, and they may 
uh, triggers some changes that you want to make in your relationships. Juno is in the 10th house during this retrograde passage. And so this is really going to land for you in your career quite solidly. And so it could, um, it could appear also in, um, in your work environment if you manage people, if you are a sort of a, um, you know, a social manager, if you manage teams, um, or especially if your business is the kind of business uh, where you work with other people one-on-one -on -one for their benefits, such as a consultancy, an agency, or a counseling practice of some kind. Uh, I'm going to throw this over to Julia now. What's up with Mars, Julia? Ooh, lots of things are going on for you, Gemini. And we will start with Mars, that planet of action, activity, and the archetype of the warrior. Wherever we have Mars, we can be super, super driven. But Mars, you know, is one of the trickier planets um, and can also bring some frustration, sometimes conflict as well. And for the first few uh, days of the month for you, Gemini, Mars starts in your 11th house, but will quickly shift to your 12th. And we'll get to that in a second. Um, the 11th house is a very social house. It represents your friends. It represents social networks. It represents any groups you're a part of. Um, and we also really covered this transit in a lot of depth in our last month's video. So if you do want to go back and review that, I highly recommend to. Um, but Mars in, in the 11th for the first few days of the month, you might be having some disagreements with friends, uh, maybe also a little bit of competition in the groups of your life too. But this can also be a transit where you really get out of big group effort too uh, with the social networks in your life. But then after July 4th, Mars is going to move into your 12th house. Um, so Mars is a super, you know, direct uh, planet. And the 12th house is just this really vague place. Um, the 12th house represents your subconscious. Um, it's a very sort of, it, it represents the collective too in astrology. It's also a very hidden house. So, you know, the energy of Mars and the energy of the 12th house don't, don't really mesh so easily together. Um, with Mars in the 12th, you might be feeling a lot more, a lot less upfront with your actions to people. You know, if you're upset at someone, you're not going to be direct about it. You know, you're not going to say, hey, you know, or, or stand up for your boundaries either. Mars in the 12th tends to kind of get sort of itchy and irritated out of nowhere too, because the 12th is such a diffuse place. Something you think <laughs> didn't bother you, you might find hours later that you're really upset about it. Um, hey, Julia. I, yeah. I think it's fair to say that in the 12th house, Captain Obvious becomes Captain Obfuscator. <laughs> 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 Can I watch out for that? That's one? hilarious. <laughs> um, yeah, Captain Obfuscator. <laughs> yeah, Mars in the twelfth house. Yeah, can is if he, if he gets upset about something, he's gonna be much more inclined to kind of be indirectly bitchy, maybe be a little <laughs> passive aggressive, or maybe um, not upfront with things, which is exactly to uh, Jamie's point there. Um, yes, but Mars in the twelfth house can be a wonderful transit, especially if you're involved with anything. Um, if you if you're involved with any causes that are higher than yourself. And that's like the key to the 12th house. It can be a tricky place, but it is really about connecting to something greater than you and beyond you. So that could mean service work, you know, working for a cause you really care about. Um, and it can also be spirituality too. So Mar Mars in the 12th would be a wonderful time for prayer, yoga, chanting, getting very active with your spiritual path, or perhaps engaging in some, some cause, being active in charity or um, service work of some kind. So that's definitely a better use of the transit. And then Mercury, the planet of your mind, the planet that represents communication in general, um, starts the month in your first house. And um, the first house is the house of self. So with Mercury in the first, for the first few days of the month, you'll be very articulate. You'll be, you'll really identify with your words a lot too, and identify with your ideas and have no problem kind of broadcasting them to other people. Um, then on July 4th, Mercury is going to pop into your second house, which is the house of money, as well as the house of stuff. You know, um, the second house, you know, a, a deeper meaning of the second house is it's right under 
under the first house. So the second house represents everything that supports the self. So if that's, you know, the money that you make through your paycheck or your, your belongings, you know, your clothes, your furniture, all the things that kind of support you and hold you up in this world. Uh, and with Mercury in the second house, your mind could be very, very preoccupied uh, with your possessions in your life, with your money, with everything that might be supporting you. The second house is also the house of values. And in a lot of ways, value, values are very foundational to who we are. Um, so Mercury in the second could mean you have an increase in communication with other people over money, as well as over the values that you hold dear to you. And then a very important day to keep track of is July 16th, because that's when Mercury will be exactly conjoined the sun. And we call that uh, Greater Epiphany Day, especially when it's out of its retrograde cycle and going direct, then it's Greater Epiphany versus Lesser Epiphany Day. Um, and these are times that they happen a few times a year. Usually they bookend the Mercury retrograde cycles. And during this, this special day and around this special day, um, you might find that you have greater insights and revelations about second house matters in your life. So um, maybe you're having some aha moments moments about money, how you can earn income. Maybe you're getting clarity on your values. Um, you know, maybe you've got some insights into your stuff like, oh my God, I should sell that off. Or, you know what, I really want to buy that. Um, so that could be a time of revelations around uh, your possessions and values in your life. And then a few things I have to say about Venus. Um, everybody loves Venus because she represents our relationships. And um, she's also the planet of art and beauty. So for the first 17 days of the month, so the first half of the month, essentially, Venus will be in your first house. Um, and when Venus is in the first house, it's a great transit. Everyone loves it because it means that uh, you'll be embodying uh, Venus and she's the planet of beauty. So it's generally a time where people look a lot better. Maybe they like doing things to sort of beautify themselves in some way, like getting a haircut or going shopping. Um, and the, you know, Venus is also an extreme extremely diplomatic planet. So you're also embodying a lot of diplomacy as well. Um, so it can be a lot easier to kind of get along with people and make good first impressions. And it's also a wonderful transit if you are single to get out there and date. Then after July 17th, Venus is going to join Mercury in that second house, which means she's bringing a little bit of luck into the sphere of uh, your money and possessions. Um, so maybe that means you earn a little bit more income, Maybe somebody gives you a really nice gift, or um, maybe you just acquire things on your own through your own paycheck that really give you um, a sense of satisfaction and pleasure too, because that's what Venus is all about. Spending money sounds so nice when Venus is <laughs> is like, yeah, I want to buy stuff. That sounds so gratifying. <laughs> Well, I got a couple of moons to report and a seasonal change. Uh, the first one is the full moon in Capricorn right here on July 13th. Um, the sun and Mercury and Ceres all hanging out here in the second house, bringing so much attention to the arena of finances and, um, and worth. And then uh, opposing that with this intense moon in your eighth house, but sort of uh, undercover here being in Capricorn. Moony Capricorn can be a little bit crusty. It can be a little bit um, self-protective, if you will. So um, there could definitely be some dialogues or possibly conflicts around uh, monies that are shared between you and a partner under this moon. And, um, and I think that finding a balance between your needs, your financial needs, and the needs of your partner or the needs of the relationship uh, is really important to do under this full moon. And uh, with this moon, we're calling it healing with lots of help. And the reason is that Chiron is involved and Chiron is all about taking two things that are separate from each other and, and weaving them together and integrating them and creating wholeness. And this particular full moon uh, also features a lot of help and support from uh, other planets such as Neptune and Juno and, uh, and Pluto, I think, over here gets into the act as well as Uranus and the nodes. So it's a very busy moon, but there's a lot of harmony in it and uh, every chance of coming out of maybe some difficult financial conversations, feeling uh, like you've been made whole. And, uh, and that could be a really good thing, especially if somebody owes you money. 
or if you owe somebody else money. Um, so then some days later, the sun will move out of cancer and into the sign of Leo, which is the sun's own sign. Very happy to be there, arriving in your third house of communication. And you being Gemini, of course, communication is what you're all about. And um, this is a wonderful house of the stimulation of ideas and conversation and learning and curiosity and wonder and awe and facts and data and all that good stuff. So the sun is bringing the spotlight of attention to that house. And uh, as the sun travels along, it's going to meet up with the moon in a lovely new moon, uh, which includes Ceres and trines Jupiter. And so um, new moons, of course, have to do with new beginnings, the starting of something. This one suggests um, a discovery of your voice, perhaps the birth of a message or an idea, uh, that light bulb going off over your head. And then the trine to Jupiter is just lovely because Jupiter over here in your 11th house says that you're lucky in your community right now. And so, and that's going on all year. And if you want to know more about that, you should check your April horoscope where um, I spoke more about Jupiter's uh, yearly passage through your 11th house. Um, not that it happens every year, but it's going to spend a year in your 11th house. And, um, and so Jupiter is bringing you such wonderful social connections and expanding your social horizons. And you have, uh, that's a great place to go to, um, to to practice your voice and to uh, to find those seed ideas that this new moon can bring you. All right, well, that's the stuff we have for you, Gemini. Hope you enjoyed it. You can always find your horoscope on our website, pandoraastrology.com, in the horoscope tab. And if you're inspired to get a reading with a Pandora astrologer, you can find the readings tab there. And in the monthly forecast, you can find out a lot more about the moons of this month and how to handle them. And also that stuff that I said about Juno retrograde and the relationship retrospection is featured on the forecast page as well. And until next time, we'll see you around the cosmos. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.